packing worm bin and we're going to feed them this morning so we're going to start by investigating the different trays to see what our worms are up to today and we still want to feed from the bottom tray up so we have to move them until we get down to the I'm sorry until we move to the very bottom today Athivaya is running the camera so we're, the first thing we're going to do is look down at the worm ladder and who might have dropped down into the bottom you can see there little tiny baby worm little tiny baby worm so they're still breeding like a house of fire and the first thing you want to do when you have this kind of worm bin is to go through and make sure that the the nozzle that allows any liquid that might be collecting in your worm bin to escape so you can pick up your worms move them into the bins because they can crawl up toward the food but you want to make sure that you get everybody out to start so you start off with a clean bin that's how that starts and then you put your little worm bin back or your worm ladder back and here you have let's see if I can pick one up they're juveniles but really it's a neonate so that's a tiny little red wiggler earthworm who was really just hatched a few days ago you can see how small they are when they come out so you want to look around on the worm ladder and the little ones that you find you can pick up and move to the sections of the worm bins where you're going to be feeding oh. we went ahead and harvested vermicompost this week we've also shipped out a pound of the worms that were in here because of the population explosion to one of our twitter friends to start out his worm bin so Gino has a pound of our worms and they're settling very nicely into his area in Illinois and as I continue to find them it's really the little guys who end up down on the worm ladder and I don't see any cocoons on the worm ladder but that looks pretty good so we'll start with the bottom bin and in the bottom bin it's time to check our progress on the avocado pits and there's a worm on it you can see and the first thing they like to do is eat all the coating off but it's not quite ready to go so when we come down in here it's damp but again I liked it to not be too wet there's some carrot in there some other things but here they are worms in various stages ah oh, and for Gino you were interested in what a cocoon looked like. Did I drop it? I might have dropped it. Hold on. Let me see if I can find another one while we look through here. Not very many mites. We like that too. Let me dig around. Oh, there's a big one. See, he's getting bigger all the time. And... Well, we'll keep looking. I don't see any. Let me look and see if I can find a cocoon in here. Lots of worms. We'll need to shred some paper in here as well to give them a little bit more bedding, but we're going to feed them. When you're feeding your bottom bins, you don't have to worry as much about covering them over with paper because um, they're going to be covered and that'll keep any fruit flies or anything like that from getting in and kind of messing with with your worm setup there are still lots of them and there are still plenty of worms as you see so removing the worms that we sent out um, for their new home really hasn't affected the amount that's going into the bin but as I continue to do the uh, as I continue to do the the feeding of the bins we'll look for some cocoons through here so these guys because it's on the bottom and they'll have plenty of time to work on it they're gonna get some strawberries normally you want to cut this stuff up so that it's easier surface area for the worms to get to but 
you can also be a little bit lazy. So the first thing they're going to get is some old strawberries. We'll give them those. My worms really like strawberries. They think strawberries are tasty. And they can have some toilet paper tubes. The nice thing about the tubes is it keeps the worm bins from settling in too tightly so that the worms aren't so tightly compacted. Set in the next bin, which is also a feeder bin. This is an apple. You can see where they've really had a lot to munch on that. And every time you move the bedding, like here, this is where the apple was. You can see the collection of worms underneath. And there are worms in various life stages, from large to juveniles. These are the red wigglers, and they're great composting worms, and they've been doing very well. I'm going to dig down, see if we can find in the midst of our eggshells and worms. Kind of on the lookout for any cocoons. I normally find the cocoons when I'm actually harvesting the vermicompost. And when I harvest the vermicompost, I still do it by hand. It takes a lot longer, but I find that if I hand harvest it, I can find um, more cocoons and then save them and I put them back into the worm bin because more worms means better composting. So they still have plenty of apples to eat in this one. I'm gonna move this bit of bedding check and see what they're doing in here and even though this looks like dirt it really isn't this is all worm castings or worm poop in the vernacular and we won't need to harvest anymore probably for about a month we're going to give them plenty of time to plenty of time to work on their composting we're going to give this bin over in this, com in this corner, a few strawberries as well. My worms seem to be very happy fruitarians. That's all right. Let me give a little bit of shredded cardboard on the top. Remember, if your worm bins are damp, which mine are because they're plastic, they tend to be a little damp, um, it's okay to add bedding that is dry. Uh, here you can see sprouts that are starring, starting. Um, probably tomatoes. It's okay to have sprouts in your compost, but when you take it out, you might want to just double check and make sure that um, you are uh, getting <clears throat> that you're. Uh, I've lost my place, but you want to make sure when you check and you take your vermicompost that you're leaving plenty for the worms. Now, this, interestingly enough, was carrot hummus, and they're not really seeming to enjoy it. I don't see a lot of worms underneath of it. And I don't see anybody really working into it. And it's been in there for a couple of weeks or so. And since I don't like the look of it, and the worms really aren't eating it, I'm going to take it out. And I don't know if that's because this was made with tahini. I didn't make this. This came as part of my mom's um, contribution to the worms. So this little part that you see right here, I'm actually just going to take out of the out of the compost and throw it away. Because I find that if it's been a couple of weeks and the worms aren't interested in the food, there's no point in just leaving it in the bin because it can certainly um, it adds to the smell. But I want them to work as opposed to not now. Down in here, this, right here, oh, I dropped it, hold on, let me see if I can find another one, there's a worm, say hi little worm, still looking, plenty of worms, there's one, this little tiny, back as you can see on my finger right here which is kind of golden is a little tiny worm cocoon so they're still breeding which is good that means the conditions are right in your bin and when you have breeding worms you have happy worms because they're getting enough food and the conditions are good enough for them to eat this one here you go 
So Gina, you wanted to see what a worm cocoon might look like. Sometimes they're a little bit larger, but that little circle right there by my fingertip is a worm cocoon. So eventually it will become a baby worm. And this one will get some of their favorites. It's worms love mangoes. They love mango skins. So they're gonna get plenty of that. And again, this one is not, um, this is not the top bin. So I still want them feeding. And here, now you can take a look at it. This is ready to come out. This was a pit for an avocado. I want to make sure there's still no worms in there and there's not, and you can see that it sprouted. So it took that maybe six weeks to sprout, and Eve will pan over to the kitchen sink on the windowsill where you can see the avocado pit that we decided to do the traditional way, and there's nothing. It hasn't even remotely started to, um, to sprout. So if you want to grow avocado plants just for fun, then I recommend starting them off in your worm pit because they'll take care of it for you. And almost all of your cardboard, as long as it's not too shiny, is very good for making the extra bedding. Newspaper, of course, is preferred. We have plenty of coir, but the worm bins themselves are not too terribly wet. So I don't think we need to add, add any of that today. We haven't had any fruit flies since the very beginning setup of the worm bins. And now we're just gonna give the extras to the very top bin. This is the one that I like to be the driest. And in here, there's some apple. And they've eaten most of everything else that's in there. That's apple, it's almost all completely mushed down now. I don't see any tomatoes that are left. I think they're a little bummed out because I haven't had any spinach to give them recently. And they do prefer that. Here's a little guy. Young, but older than um, a fresh hatchling. So, as we go through this, and I think Eve can attest to the fact that there's really very little smell coming Zero. out of the bin. Yeah, it doesn't smell at all. And this is in my kitchen, and I don't mind kitchen waste um, that even would smell a little bit, but it's been my experience for the months that I've been doing the worm bins that I just haven't had any smell, which makes it very pleasant because even regular garbage that can't be, um, that, that can't be recycled into the worm bin, even when it's dry, has a more unpleasant smell, and I find myself taking it out more often than um, any of the vermicomposting. So really, in terms of the overall scent of your kitchen, it's very non, um, uh, the smell itself is non-aggressive, and I know that's a weird phrase to use, but some, I think we've all been in kitchens where you come in and you sniff and you're like, oh, I don't like that, it's unpleasant. But this is not an unpleasant smell. And they are continuing to eat and continuing to compost at a really fast rate. Now that it's springtime and summer's coming, my whole house is warmer, so I find that the worms are more active. But you just need to remember, in terms of Fahrenheit, you wanna keep your worms working between, somewhere between um, 40 and about 75 degrees. It works better for them. I found a little piece of plastic. This was obviously on some paper. So I'll take that out because your worms are not gonna um, your worms are not going to compost plastic. They can't do that. But I don't see anything in here. There's grit, some eggshells, some bedding. It all looks pretty good. And here, if you look at the side of the bin, we're going to feed this bin until the castings come up to about an inch or half an inch to the top. And once all of that is worm casting, then really you're looking at um, a good amount of vermicompost to harvest. So just you should just relax and be patient, keep feeding them. When you have a stacked system like this, the worms up, move up and down until they get to the food that they want. So they'll take care of it for you no matter what bin you're feeding in. 
This one doesn't have as many worms because this is the bin that I harvested when I was sending our extra worms out to our friend. But you can see there are still worms in there and they're still doing what they're supposed to do. So we're going to give them in this corner, which I haven't fed for a little while. I always move the, I always move the um, feeding site. I rotate the feeding site depending on um, where the last time was that I fed. And I try to rotate sort of in a clockwise basis, because uh, clockwise manner, because that helps me remember where I fed. And there's two of them working along. So they're going to get the last of the food, which is some of their favorite mangoes, which we had last night at dinner, and they were very good. So they get the extras plus the skins. It takes them longer to um, eat the skins than you might expect, but they will eventually get to that as well. They get the rest of the tomatoes because we just fed the European night crawlers, so it's the time to feed the uh, red wigglers. They get a few little tasty bits. And what'll happen is if you leave this alone and you check it in a couple of days, everybody on this side of the box will have moved over to the second part of the box to start feeding off of that. So that's really all that you're looking at. And as you see, this is important to see, this was just a piece of newspaper, but they're going to break this down too, and they already have. So as long as you're keeping your bin cool, but not um, cool, but not too cold and wet. There's another little cocoon, but not too wet. Then you're going to find with enough oxygen circulating around that you'll end up with less anaerobic conditions and you won't get that funky garbage smell, which is normally what happens here. Little juvenile. He's like a teenager, that one. And he's a juvenile. And plenty of worms in there. So it's good to see the juveniles feeding. But on the top bin, that's when it's really more important to make sure that you have bedding on top that prevents other um, uh, less savory characters from entering into your worm bin, which is really what you don't want. So we're going to finish with that. The last thing to do if you have this kind of bin is just check the top. Make sure none of your worms are making a break for it. And if they're not, pop the lid on. You can leave that alone for the rest of the day. <clears throat> and here, we'll open up and look at the European night crawlers because, again, these plastic bins tend to be very damp. And you want to open it up a little bit, get some air circulating in there because even though there are air holes, it still tends to want to get damp. They have extra coffee grounds because I started a new mushroom project this week and I had some extra leftover coffee grounds. But these guys, the European night crawlers, are currently making tons of vermicompost. And I've had a population explosion with them as well because I can dig my hand down almost anywhere in the bin and come up with a huge handful of worms, and we only started out with a pound of them. They have um, more than doubled in capacity, and they started out very tiny. Um, they came to me really as juveniles, and they've really grown a great deal. And I'm supposed to um, be preparing these guys for, for bait fishing, to sell them as bait, but I'm emotionally attached to them, so. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that or not. Maybe I'll just keep them and um, keep them working and making vermicompost and perhaps sell them as vermicomposting worms. Although there's nothing wrong with fishing and they make great bait. So I have to say that. But you can see all alive, wiggling around, looking pretty good, running away from the light. They have some carrots still in here. They like to compost my son's pizza boxes, for which I'm very thankful. This is like the last little bit from the feeding that we did weeks ago. And all of the bread that I initially showed you a few weeks ago that had the green mold on it, that's all gone. They've composted all of that. So once it breaks down to a certain level, 
it um, really doesn't need to work that far. Now, if I work my hand all the way down to the bottom of the bin, they have made about four and a half to five inches of vermicompost just in what they're working on. And here's the best cocoon I think I've seen so far. Okay, Gino, here it is. Let me see if I can get the vermicompost away from it. It looks like a tiny little golden ball. And that is what the um, cast it, or that's what the cocoon looks like. Oh, and here's the teeny tiniest worm. He's the teeniest. He's just freshly hatched. And that's what you'll get when they're small. So you want to keep conditions in your worm bin right because the little ones, if they get out and escape, they will die very quickly on your kitchen floor because they don't have much of a slime coat. So you want to keep conditions in your bin as tasty and as right for the worms as possible. So we're done with that one. We can leave it alone. That's going to be the end of our video because this is the only time that I have Athy here to help me make it. And if you guys have any questions, you can find us on Twitter at Hoods Organics or leave a comment in the comments box. And that's it.